Should be able to hear the gate drop and everything. <laughs> YouTube, how we doing? Welcome back to the channel. It's Matty B. Thank you guys very much for watching. We're out here at the World Freaking Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway. Can't say international without national. Um, we're doing something a little different today. You guys know me uh, as a two-stroke guy. This is uh, quite literally the complete opposite, complete 180 of me riding a two-stroke. Pan over to us over there. Yeah. <laughs> we are shredding the Stark Vard National. Um, I don't have any bikes to run right now. All my two strokes are TKO. They've left the chat. So uh, the guys at Stark, they were kind enough to give me a test ride on Saturday before the Daytona Supercross, which I had a freaking blast at. Um, so they said, you want to race it Tuesday, Vintage Day, Daytona? So I said, why the hell not? Let's do it. We only got two other guys in the class besides me. So I think a podium is going to be in the contract. I think we got it unlocked. Check it. We got 666 Satan going out to practice. Vintage bikes are the devil, Bobby. Um, but yeah, um, we got riders, vintage bikes right here today, quad national, couch national, Carson Brown's out here ripping, batteries are charged. Luckily, we're not getting enough track time to need any electricity or charging or anything. So, What uh, HP are you running? Uh, what right are now your we're settings? On, right now we're at 55 HP. We're right in the middle on mode three. And uh, yeah, we're gonna gag it, literally. And uh, really weird not having any noise out there. Might have to make my own again, but yeah, you guys already know we'll make it work. Uh, we we're actually supposed to do a little bit of uh, past and future racing today, all on the same day. We were gonna race a 1990 KX500, but unfortunately, the guy whose bike it was, he backed out, which that's all good. It's not my machinery. I guess it's a fresh restore. So uh, we're in full Duracell mode today, baby. No choice. Just got graphics made. Check it. Oh. They're custom. Straight off the printer. Sweet. Hey, at least we're matching electrical tape, electric bike. <laughs> Hell yeah. World Center of Racing, baby. Check it. At a battery, battery powered national. Who would have thought? <laughs> Get your earplugs out.
football out here at Daytona this weekend. We, we saw the present in uh, Saturday night, and we've seen some of the past in the vintage racing. Let's talk about what's coming up next. We got a little bit of the future, a little bit of what's uh, what's going to be coming in the, in the following following years to come maybe uh, I don't want to speculate we don't know where things are going but we got the open E class coming up next gonna be able to hear the gate drop and everything <laughs> not gonna be hearing a whole lot the revs are not coming up as Jason Wygant said yesterday and uh, looking like that's for Keen grabbing the whole shot I believe that is the start that he is riding out there on so Burkeen doing his thing out front right now. Still like a good smell of two strokes so i mean we're well, that's still, also true too. we're still getting over that but uh, nonetheless i do think it's a cool option cool opportunity for some of these riders to try out a uh, really a brand new style of racing arguably maybe the biggest innovation since the two stroke to four stroke switch <laughs> Final lap, and uh, Burkeen's a two-stroke guy too. So, oh yeah, doing a yeah. big, mm -hmm. big switch over there. Matt rides YZ 250 yep. usually on the uh, nationals at Supercross. You know that that's who he is. He's a uh, great rider, fantastic guy. Uh, does a lot with youth riders as well. Kind of becoming a, a media mogul, if you sure, will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, great yeah. To some of these indoor races and stuff, and he takes a check of flag, shows, hey, man, I, I do spend some time behind the camera, but I still know how to get it done. <laughs> like I don't know what we got, but it's open, and Carson Brown is about to blow the ACL right out of the gate. I don't know who's beating him, and I don't care. Oh, there's the slingshot we were waiting for. Decent. Oh, Carson, pick her up. And now we've got legend Robbie Horton. Supercross podium racer from the 90s out here on what seems to be an 80s model CR 250, 125, I don't know. Yeah, 250. Whoa! We don't want to go to vintage Indonesia. The condos there back in the day were horrible. My boy Alex Wagers has been second behind Robbie Horton. Wagers, my boy's on the 500. 
Road to staging. She felt a little funny on the concrete. We got a front flat. We're swapping her. And we only got like a moto or two before. So hopefully we'll make it out because we've been having a blast on this thing. Thankful for Jason coming out here meeting me. He's freaking mass car pit stopping it right now. Mega quick change. We'll see if we make the moto or not. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, you're already out yeah. there. I made it. In true Maddie B fashion, I got to the gate and felt this tire, and it was even flatter than the tire I had on there before. We were in a huge rush trying to get it changed, and I guess the other wheel that we put on there had a bad rim lock. Air had left the chat on that one as well. I don't really blame anybody but myself for this one. If I would have gone down to staging earlier, we would have figured it out earlier, and we wouldn't have had to rush so bad, but... I was here, I paid a lot of money to race, so that's what we did. I guess my main takeaway is no matter the bike brand, gas, electric, or vegetable oil, bike problems are in my contract. Maddie, be on the line for uh, <laughs> the e-bike class? No way. <laughs> Getting the start on the start. Getting a little taste of the future coming up next with our open E-Class. As right now, it's Matt Burkeen out on the Stark handling business. I, you probably can't hear him, but he's out there. Flat out here managing, no choice, literally. We can still eat through here though, yeah. For me, if it's something that gets someone on two wheels or makes it more accessible or makes it a little bit easier to learn the complexities of the sport, right? I'm all for it. Let's let's get people on motorcycles, whether they're combustion or electric. Um, I think it's a good thing. And, and I like how uh, Burkeen there, look at that. He's on, a, he's on a start, an innovative electric bike, but yet he's got that throwback vintage look. Uh, with that with that duct tape number one. And then Matt, obviously a, a two-stroke ripper in most other times. Uh, curious to when this all came to be. I didn't uh, didn't know Matt was planning on participating. So curious to find out how exactly he got his hands on one of these and, and curious to hear what he thinks about this as well. Another great benefit of that is, is you have the variable, you know, like the speed controls. Put up the five. Let's break the sound barrier on the front straight. My tire was flat the whole moto. I started with a flat front. Just ran the whole moto on a flat front. Damn! Leaned down and checked it when the two card went up and it was flat as shit. Wow! Hey, hold on to me really tight. Wow! That's <laughs> I was barely twisting it just then. You would actually fly off the back like you would drag me with you. All right, so check this out. It was last second fire drill. We had a flat tire, but here's the funny part. So this one that we took off, come observe, you know, she's flat definitely, but like, just wait till you see this. The one that I chose to use, 
way flatter than the one over there. Really f***ed myself on that one. You still won though. I'll take it. Apparently that was the first ever official AMA Open E-Bike National. On yeah, the VAR. I mean, obviously I'm super humble and all, but like we're pretty much in the record book. No, no, yeah. No big deal. Guinness book. Guinness. <laughs> 2024. Hey, but really, like, it was just fun being out here and riding this thing, racing this thing. Thank you to Jason and the guys at Stark, Anton, for helping me get set up with the test and to race out here. I've never even raced at Daytona Speedway. I may have got Hanson. Um, yeah, I was glad I was doing it on the electric bike. I probably wouldn't have been very into it on my bike, but just to do something different, switch it up, feel the voltage, baby. It was a good time. Yeah. Big thank you to these guys. It's awesome. And new marketing campaign. The Stark's so fun, you can shred it with a flat tire. The announcer said something about how you were on the bike of the future, but still brought back the retro with your duct tape one, or electrical tape number one. It's very on brand for Maddie B. If you guys have known me for a while, you know that's the OG. Yeah, they knew what was up. Cool. Well, you two, if you guys made it this far, thank you very much for tuning into the channel, and I hope you guys enjoyed the content. For all my core fans, don't be alarmed. I'm still a two-stroke guy. I literally got back to racing my two-stroke the very next weekend. But yeah, all in all, I, I really just had a, a really fun time getting the opportunity to just do something new, and um, really, it's just all new territory, racing e-bike and motocross. There was a lot of things I really liked about the Varg, and I had a absolute blast racing it um it was really fun playing with all the modes and stuff giving it more hps so i could break the sound barrier down the back straight that was really fun the bike actually corners a lot better than you would think um obviously it's heavy being that it's got a big old battery and whatnot in it but you really can't feel the weight at all it doesn't feel like a heavy bike and you can play it over nicely suspension was actually pretty good considering the fact that uh, we didn't touch any clickers, didn't sit sag or anything like that. The only time I think it has a little bit of uh, dancing in the rear is it's just got so much torque. So when you put it in a higher mode and you're accelerating hard, it does dance a little bit in the rear. But you'll have that on the bigger jobs, sometimes the smaller ones too. As far as a couple of things that I struggled with, it was really hard to uh, get used to having two handbrakes. That was the main thing that messed me up. I even kind of found myself using the handbrake as a clutch, even though it was obviously a brake a couple times. So that, that was kind of funky, but um, not having a foot brake, it made it to where you could stand on your toes really good and focus on that part of your form. And they do have a version of the bike that comes with a foot brake. So I, that just wasn't the bike that I got to test. It had two handbrakes. So if I had to get one of these, I'd probably have to go for the foot brake just because it's what I've spent my whole life doing and it's what I'm comfortable with. Uh, the one section of the track where it was deep sand, I was struggling a little bit, but I honestly think that's more of a rider thing than bike thing. I'm not that great in the sand already. So I don't think anything's changed as far as gas or electric in the deep sand department for the 820 or should I say the electrical one. And no noise is, is honestly super weird. Like thankfully the bike is tons of fun to ride so it kind of helps make up for the lack of noise factor but yeah that that part would take a lot of getting used to the noise and the fumes and all that that's what we've all come to know and love about motocross there's only three of us so it wasn't really like much of a race but it was a lot of fun and again just a really unique cool opportunity so i want to thank uh, anton jason and everybody from start for allowing me to do this and for making it happen for me i'm not sure when we're going to get any more time on electric in the future we're back to the gas national now so um yeah stay tuned